welcome back to another episode of Safety Glasses Required. On this episode I want to talk to you about 3D printer enclosures. Many of you have uh, maybe just recently got your 3D printer, just recently got into 3D printing, and you're looking, what can I make? And I've got videos on 3D printed car parts and all kinds of useful, way, useful ways to use your 3D printer to improve your everyday life. That's really what, what, what I want to focus on with this channel is how can you use a 3D printer to make some really neat things that uh, really improve your life. Maybe it's a way to come up with a new business idea or product. Uh, and to do that, you're going to need functional materials. So while PLA is a great starter material and it can make some really neat and intricate parts, once you start moving into the area of functional parts, you're going to need some stronger materials, more durable materials and higher temperature resistant materials. The challenge with printing these though, and, there, and there's a reason why you don't start out printing ABS right away or nylons, is that there are a lot more things to consider. And 3D printing is already a challenging hobby, challenging skill set to pick up. You've got everything from 3D modeling to figuring out what the heck is an STL file to, you know, the end of this thing is very hot, don't touch it. At any rate, let's talk about enclosures. Enclosures are a way to cover your 3D printer, to put something to put your 3D printer in to help maintain temperature, to control fumes, to in some ways add some safety to your machine. You're going to need it if you're going to start thinking about printing things like ABS, nylon, anything basically beyond the starter materials of PLA and even PETG, you're really going to want an enclosure. And even those materials can benefit from using an enclosure. If you look at high-end FDM printers from 20 years ago or even the machines coming out today, many of them will come with some form of enclosure, some way to keep air currents from blowing across your print and causing warping. ABS and nylon print at much higher temperatures the glass transition temperature of both those materials is much higher as well. The benefits from this come in that you have much higher resistance to high temperature environments. You can use them in a hot car and not be concerned with the part melting or deforming. However, with those benefits come some challenges. You're going to need to keep your environment much better controlled. There's no more printing on the kitchen table. And, and besides, some of the fumes that come with the materials, specifically ABS, can be pretty obnoxious, if not potentially dangerous, according to some articles. That's another conversation for another day. But what I've done with my printer to help mitigate some of those risks and control the warping is to install it in an enclosure. Now, enclosures can be very simple. They can be as simple as putting a cardboard box over top of your printer. And I did that for years. It works well. There are some risks with putting your printer in a cardboard box. Obviously, it's a very hot uh, piece of electronics with hot ends and hot beds, and some of the electronics on these machines may or may not be, you know, really uh, reliable. If you've got a particularly cheap, affordable printer from overseas. Reg regardless, if you put your machine in a cardboard box, that should be considered to, to print with at least. That should be considered a temporary use kind of thing. Maybe you can get a couple prints off. I did it for a little longer than that, but I kept a very close eye on the printer while I was using it in that cardboard box. At some point I decided to upgrade. And now there's many routes you can take here and that's where I'm going to try to make a little series on enclosures. Uh, many of you probably have already built your own 3D printer enclosure. And if you have, hit me up on Instagram, send me an email, show me some pictures. I'd love to see what you've made. Uh, building an enclosure can actually be kind of fun. I've built several of them. The first one I actually built, I'm going to detail in the rest of this video. It, uh, I actually didn't build the enclosure at all. I purchased it and it was, it was made from an industrial PC cabinet. So uh, the old CRT monitors, you know, from back, it feels like forever ago now, they were kind of big and bulky. When you use them in an industrial environment like a machine shop or a warehouse or a mill or something like that, where there's all kinds of vibrations and fumes and dust and heat and things like that, they used to enclose those PCs inside of a cabinet. Those cabinets actually work out really well in terms of size for uh, 3D printers today. Uh, the one I picked up actually was purchased from a friend who was using it for another 3D printer at the time, but uh, you can pick these up at industrial uh, surplus stores. Uh, HGR is actually one that's near here, near here in, in Northeast Ohio, and they actually have really good deals. You could probably pick one of these up anywhere from 20 bucks up to a couple hundred dollars, depending on the condition, the age, how clean it is, how much willing, work you're willing to do to it. Really, there's a lot of possibilities here. If you live in the Midwest where there was a lot of industry that's probably closed down over time, unfortunately, uh, you might have a lot better access to these sort of enclosures. You don't really want to scrounge around in an industrial surplus uh, 
store, what you can do is you can actually find uh, server cabinets now actually are very similar and can be used for a similar application. Uh, I'll have a link down below for a couple of those as well. Um, you can pick these up from a variety of places as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show the video that I filmed actually a while ago on my 3D printer cabinet now. Um, it uh, it's it's the the my Maker Gear M2 is still in that cabinet and it's wor been working fantastic uh, ever since. And I really like the uh, safety of the metal, all metal cabinet and how it has really nice seals on it. it works really well. So let's go out to the shop and take a look at my original 3D printer enclosure, the one that came after the cardboard box. So first off, the first thing I did is put it in an enclosure. You can see it behind me here, and that enclosure. is uh, an old PC cabinet that they used in like machine shops. So the cool thing about these is they have really nice seals on them. You can see there. Those seals keep the, the cabinet, keep dust out, and they keep the uh, printer um, at a nice temperature in there because so I can actually in the winter when it's really cold out I've got a little heater right there that is controlled by a thermostat right there and when it gets down below a certain temperature the printer the, the, that thermostat that came from Amazon turns on turns on that heater Heats up. Normally, I keep it kind of aimed away from the bed, so it's just not kind of blown against the part. Uh, right now, you might still smoke. That's actually the printer's preheating right now, so there's uh, some of the glue residue is burning off a little bit as it warms up. Uh, you'll see a lot of times that there's a very fine, kind of sticky-looking layer on here. So the best thing I've ever found to get the bed to adhere to the part, or the part to adhere to the bed, is kind of Elmer's glue. Stuff works great. Get all of our focus. You put a nice fine layer on there. At first I used to put on, change it just about every print, but now I actually found that I can print several prints on there. For the videos, a lot of times I try to put a fresh layer on, but I don't always get to it. So let's get to some other important things on here. One of the other things I found with 3D printing makes a really big deal, and you're gonna see it's really high right now, is humidity. So I've had the door open a lot today on the printer as I've been changing things and setting it up, but the uh, the temperature or the humidity needs to be low because basically the this my 3D printer is an FDM 3D printer as you know and as it prints the melts this filament here and that filament then gets fed up to the extruder now the tip there that tip is preheated right now to 245 degrees C at 245 degrees C that's well above the 100 degrees C boiling point of water so any moisture that gets absorbed into this filament it's going to cause all kinds of popping and and uh, inconsistencies in the print. So I uh, usually monitor the humidity in the print printer, and I've also got these little guys here, these Evadries. They're uh, rechargeable kind of desiccants. So the cool thing is, I don't know if you can see there, it needs recharged, but it tells you what based on the color there of the desiccant gel, uh, whether or not it needs to be recharged if it's dry. The other cool thing is when it is dry, when it is wet, what you can do plug the thing in right to an outlet. Uh, they recommend using an extension cord so this isn't like hanging into an outlet or anything. But this works great. Uh, it dries itself out in less than a day. I pop one of these guys, pop it right back in here, and it keeps the whole cabinet nice and dry. For the filament that I leave on the machine, that works pretty well. Uh, some of the other cool features, as you know, the printer is, is web connected. Uh, and I use Octoprint for that. So over here I've got a Raspberry Pi on the side of the printer. So basically it's Wi-Fi connected right there. This is the printer is connected here and behind it there is the other USB plug for the webcam. So some of the time lapses, actually I've never used it for the thing, but it is, works great for controlling the printer. It's not so great for YouTube. Um, on the side here I mounted this nice little uh, articulating mount. That articulating mount works great for 
holding my phone and there's basically a little tablet mount. I originally thought I'd mount my Nexus 7 tablet here. Turns out the Nexus 7 tablet died shortly after I set this up. So I use my phone and as you've seen me do it before, a lot of times I'll use Use a web browser. I've got it set up now where there's a shortcut on my desktop and uh, then I can get to Octoprint that way. The cool thing is is that I've got it set up so that it uses Touch UI. So Octoprint shows up a lot better. Octoprint shows up a lot better when, when you use Touch UI on a phone. It's almost unusable on a phone if you're not using Touch UI. So uh, this works really well. It gives me a nice place to set my phone while I'm purging filament, preheating, cleaning the bed, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's also this really cool, you see there's a lot of light in here. This is, they're USB under cabinet lights and I can control it with this controller. Ta-da, lights on, lights off. Uh, you can do crazy stuff. Now, I call that, I call that disco mode. There's a bunch of these seizure-inducing modes here. Eventually it gets back to the plain light. So you can actually control the brightness with these. I keep them usually all the way turned up. So for the time lapses that I actually show on YouTube, I use a Yi Action Cam, kind of like a little knockoff GoPro. It works really well. It's only 80 bucks or so on Amazon or B&H Photo. So normally when I use it, I mount it right to the bed and I fabricated this little mount. It might do something better someday. But this is to try to stop some of that 100 degree bed temperature heat getting into the print, into the uh, camera. So you might be asking, what else do I have here? Uh, kind of showed off with the Lexus sitting up there. Normally she's in the house. I don't normally have her out here with the printer, but uh, I can tell her to turn the printer on so at least I can start preheating it. So down here in the bottom of the cabinet now, this is where I store almost a lot of my filament that I use a lot. Um, I usually keep it in these, uh, like basically Tupperware cake pans, and I keep some desiccant in there. I also keep another one of those Evadrys down here, and then when it gets real cold, there's an even bigger heater that is kept down here. Um, Uh, some filament I've not used yet, some old spools in the back there, more cake pans, uh, fresh beds, glass beds for the printer if I need to replace one, if one cracks or whatever. Uh, and then my vapor bathing set up there. Uh, basically a crock pot kind of deal. We'll do a video on that sometime soon too. Here's the webcam that I use. It's a pretty old one, but it works pretty well. It's just basically giving me a preview of the screen on the preview of the printer, what it's doing. Um. So I think that's the majority. Uh, if you guys don't know, it's a Maker Gear M2. I've upgraded it to dual extruder. So other benefits of using an enclosure outside of controlling temperatures, you can use, uh, the, the enclosure can actually be used to help control fumes. You can also use it to keep little kids from getting their hands inside there. Um, you can also, it, it works well as a great way to kind of keep everything contained and organized. You can put it on wheels and move the printer around from time to time. There's a lot of great reasons why you might consider putting your printer in an enclosure. Like I said at the beginning of the video, send me pictures of your enclosure. Uh, I'd like to show some of uh, the enclosures you guys have built um, at the end of my next enclosure video to show you some th other ideas if you've got a really great one. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can, you can do with this and I think this is a great opportunity to kind of share some, some neat ideas. So if you've got a really cool enclosure, post it up on social media, tag me, uh, at safety glass is required. Follow me on Instagram, you can send me a DM, send me an email, show me pictures, I'd love to see what you've done with your enclosure and how you're using it with your 3D printer. So ordinarily, I'm not a shill for, hit the subscribe button down below, as many of you who've watched my videos probably already know. However, recently, YouTube has changed the requirements for the YouTube Partner Program. If you're not familiar with any of this, basically what this program allows is for content creators like myself to make a little bit of money 
in my case a little bit of money, to help pay for things like filament from the ads that play before, during, and after this video. The new requirements require 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time in the last 12 months. I've met the requirement already for the watch time. However, I'm just a little short of 1,000 subscribers. As of me filming this right now, if you look down below, I have about 920 subscribers. That probably has gone up a few since me filming this, but I need to hit that 1,000. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it and I re it really helps me make these videos and afford things like Alloy 910, one of the strongest 3D printing filaments that you can purchase in the market today. Now if you want to learn more about 3D printing enclosures and printing with the strong, one of the strongest 3D printing filaments available today and want to make sure you don't miss out on that content and help me pay for things like trying out these new filaments, consider subscribing. Thanks again.